For every young girl that has looked up to you, thank you, Ash Barty, for the incredible mark you've left on the court, off the court and in our hearts. Let's go live now to former doubles world number one and prominent administrator, former CEO of the Australian Open, Paul McNamee. Paul, let me start by just saying, first of all, getting your reaction to this news today. Ash Barty, 25, leaving at the peak of her powers. Well, the main reaction is shock because you, no one saw that coming. Uh, the player who's the current Wimbledon and Australian Open champion, the holder of two Grand Slams right now, and to walk away. I mean, this is the biggest shock, retirement shock since Bjorn Borg did it, uh, retired at the age of 26, which left a big hole in the sport. So it, it, it leaves a hole. Um, so the first reaction is shock, and then the second one is, you know, thank you, Ash, for a great career and for the person you are and wishing her well. So as someone who's com competed at that level and, and, you know, on the tour and seen the demands on, on the best in the world, can you understand why um, having won three Grand Slams, being world number one at the end of a calendar year on three occasions, even though she's only 25, can you, can you see why she's made the call at some level? Look, it's Ash's inner world and what she wants for herself and the way that makes her tick. She is different. Um, you know, she has retired in a way before when she went to cricket. So um, we know that Ash does her own thing. Um, she talked a lot in that interview. We'll find out a lot more tomorrow what her plans are. But in that interview, she talked about winning Wimbledon and how much that went to her. That was the one thing she wanted to win. Um I experienced that pretty closely before being close to Pat Cash, who, after he won Wimbledon, he was never the same. He was never the same because it was the one thing he always wanted to win. And mm -hmm. once that was achieved, there was a slight hole. Now, I'm not sure if that's the case, but it's it's um, it's very difficult, I guess, as an athlete, if you if you if you have one massive dream that you do achieve, um, where do you go from there? Well. She went from there and won the Australian Open, which was massive to do that at your home Grand Slam. So I think we'll find out more tomorrow what, what she has in mind for her future. I think that's, that's the key. Paul, they talk about the uh, backhand slice as being one of the, the greatest shots in, in world tennis. But from, from someone who looks at this from, from the outside in, what, what I found incredible was her versatility. No matter what surface she was on, she was dominant, Paul. Yeah, she won women on grass, the Australian Open on hard court, French Open on clay. So she mastered all surfaces and all sports. She's she's played at an elite level in cricket. She's capable of playing of an elite level at an elite level in golf. There's no doubt about that. But I think she talked about not wanting to travel as much. So maybe rules that out. Um, she kicks the footy awfully well. I mean, in preparation for her matches at Wimbledon this year, I mean, I, saw, I was over there. I saw her kicking the Sharon consistently um, <laughs> in the lead up to a match. So this is a, you, you know, an all-round Aussie girl, nice girl, who um, really hasn't put a foot wrong. You've just got to say what a stellar career. But there is a, there's a touch of disappointment, to be honest, that she's going out of world number one with, I think, so much ahead of her. Um, that the that the journey in tennis is stopping because it is, in a way it is a lifelong journey. So there is a there is a hint of disappointment there. There is also an amazing self awareness though, isn't there? To to say okay, at twenty five, I've given everything I can give, physically, mentally is the way she put it, and to hang up her her racket. Uh, to me, it, it seems this sort of self awareness that people twice her age don't have, Paul. Yes, yes, and that she's a very uh, holistic, aware person. However, you know, th there's always this, this internal fight between being goals-driven and journey-driven uh, as an athlete. And uh, I think, you know, the, the, something in her died when she won Wimbledon last year. It's very clear about that, and that's that's... That's how Ash Barty ticks. It's it's not the same for everyone. And and as I said, so yeah, uh, she will find find her way moving forward. We'll find. We deserve to hear from Ash herself what her plans are. She has dreams, and she's absolutely entitled to fulfil those dreams. She's been what a role model for Australia. You know what an ambassador. 
uh, and will be greatly missed in that role. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? It's a sport where um, <laughs> you do get the odd uh, difficult uh, personality. Let's be frank. I mean, you, you played against one of the biggest ones, uh, uh, John McEnroe, years ago. But, uh, you know, it, when you look at this individual, what a wonderful human being she is. And that scene with Yvonne Goolagong at the Australian Open, that's up there with Cathy Freeman in the 2000 Olympics, isn't it, as an iconic moment in Australian sport? Yes, uh, and Yvonne had that, that same goal. So I, I, they're, they're two wonderful people of Indigenous background that, that, that have done Australia proud. And uh, Ash is um, a, a, a phenomenal role model. She does leave at the top, but still with a tinge of disappointment, I, I feel, for the sport, but not for Ash. If that's what Ash wants um, and deep down that's what she feels, then we're only going to back her 100%. But she's going to be missed, Karen. She'll be missed. Mm. Yeah, indeed. It was in interesting. Uh, Andy Murray said something similar. Bad for tennis, great for Ash Barty. But, uh, Paul, we appreciate your reflections today on on, yeah. on a, an emotional day in some respects for the sport. And um, we, th we appreciate your reflections, Paul. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Kevin.